Hi everybody, it's Shari here and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this wood inlay card similar to one I made before. Um, it's very simple to do if you have this wood paper that I have here. Now I just am going to use one color. Um, in a card I made before the for Father's Day, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I used two colors of this wood paper. But I'm going to show you an easy way to do it with just one color and it um, saves this wood paper. You don't use quite as much. So it's really easy to cut with a paper trimmer here. So I'm just going to cut my piece down um, to a three inch piece of paper here and that way my stitch rectangle die that I'm using is going to fit on there. It's slightly smaller than three inches wide. So I'm just going to snug it up to the edge and I'm going to use a little bit of post-it note tape to hold it in place as I run it through my die cut machine. And these dies with the little stitching details really do cut this wood paper really nicely. So here's my rectangle here. Now I'm going to take some of the new alphabet dies and I'm going to use my grid on my cutting mat here to line them up and I'm just putting the die down that I cut the square out of just to make sure it fits in there nicely. I'm going to take a nice long piece of that post-it note tape and pick those letters up so now they're kind of all held together like they're one die. And you'll see I'm just going to take my um, pin here and just sort of trace where the edge of the S is and the end of the E because you can't really see through this tape so this is just going to help me place it on my wood rectangle. So now I can center it up. I can see where the beginning and end of that word is and center it up in there and now I have these letters so I'm just going to take, um, take care to pop them out easily and set them aside. So now you can see I'm taking some of the stitched leaf dies and just placing them around where I want them to be. I'm going to use four of them um, and kind of put a big and a small together in two opposite corners. And I like that they're kind of going off the side here, so it's just going to continue off the side of this rectangle. So I'm just going to use that post-it note tape again and tape those down so that they stay in the spots that I want them. I really like this tape because it's not too sticky. Sometimes I have trouble with washi tape sticking and pulling up my paper at times. Probably wouldn't do it on this wood, but just to be safe, I like the post-it note tape. So you can see there those pieces, and I'll pop them out of the dies here in a minute. But you can see like it leaves that nice, um, beautifully die cut space that those leaves are going to pop right back in. You can see how well that they are going to fit in there. So I'm just going to speed it up here and I'm using a Copic marker and this is how I'm going to achieve the different colors of wood without having different colors of wood paper. So I'm using an E13 here and I'm just coloring two of these leaves. Now these are in opposing corners so I'm going to have a lighter and a darker leaf in each corner. And then I'm going to use the E15 I think is what this is. And I'm just going to color the other two leaves. And you can go over it a couple times if it's not quite dark enough. And I actually tested the colors on the, the little scrap piece of wood just to um, see what they look like. Make sure that they work together like I wanted them to. And then I'm going to take an even darker brown here and I'm going to color the letters. These are pretty delicate, you just have to be careful with them. And take your time. And now it looks like you have different colors of wood, even though you only had that one color. So now I'm taking my rectangle, I'm going to flip it over. It's easier to lay these in this way because then I can just put a piece of tape on the back side. So I'm just laying those pieces back in where they came out of. It's very easy to do, um, except for that little dot in the eye. That was kind of giving me trouble. but. I think I should have got my tweezers. I was just being lazy. <laughs> but once you get those little pieces in there, I'm going to take a nice uh, another piece of that post-it note tape and hold them to the back. So this is why I did it from the back side so I could easily just stick a piece of tape on and not have to try and do it turn it over with those pieces in there. So now I'm laying my leaves into their little holes that they came out of. I'm going to do the same thing, hold them in place with that post-it note tape.
I also like this tape too because it's a paper tape. Sometimes washi tape has a little bit of a waxy finish. And I'm going to be gluing this to another sheet of paper and I'm not going to be taking that tape off. So it's nice to have that tape on there. That'll um, adhere with the glue pretty well. So I had a little piece of the tape sticking out, so I'm just going to fix that. I don't want that sticking out the side. I could have trimmed it off with, with the scissors too. So now you get that nice inlay look like you have different stained woods or different colored woods. So I thought I would back this piece of wood with some burlap. Kind of lots of texture and different materials going on on this card. So I'm just going to lay this on this 12 by 12 sheet of burlap that I have and cut a square out that's a little larger. You could probably also use the um, stitched rectangle die the next size up to do this, but it's pretty easy to cut a straight square with the burlap because you can use the weave of the fabric to figure out where your line is. And now I'm just using some blue cardstock. This is some basil cardstock. I think this is the candy buttons color. And I'm just going to cut a standard size card base that's top folding. You can see there how I'm planning on stacking those pieces together. Now to give my wood paper a little more stability, I've just die cut a piece of craft cardstock with that same rectangle size. And I'm just going to add some liquid glue. And I'm just going to back that wood paper with this piece of cardstock. This will give it a little more thickness, a little more stability, and really hold those leaves in place. You could also glue this down without the tape and then lay the pieces in on top of the glue. You could do it either way. You don't have to have the tape. So now I'm just trimming off some uneven pieces of the burlap here I'm using um, some these scissors I keep for fabric and ribbons. That way they're nice and sharp. I don't use them on paper. And then I've got these little glue dot square things here. And I'm just going to put a whole bunch of those around on the burlap. I didn't want to use liquid glue because it'll come through the fabric. But I definitely want to make sure this gets stuck down really well. So now I'm just putting it on the card base here, making sure all those little glue dots are stuck down. I tried to not put them too close to the edge so hopefully they get covered up by the wood piece. And then I'm going to adhere down the wood piece with some foam adhesive. So I've just got some foam tape here and I'm just going to pull off a couple pieces. Um, one on each side for sure and then I'm going to put one down the middle. Now before I stick this down, I want to put some uh, ribbon, some twine, some burlap string that is from May Arts. So I chose to use the lighter color. I have a lighter and a darker color, but I want to use the lighter one because it stands out against the burlap. The darker color is pretty much the same color as the burlap. And I wrapped it around a few times, and then I'm just going to tie a bow to the left side of my panel there. So you can see I'm just putting that up there to make sure I get the bow tied over far enough. It's a lot easier to shift it before you tie it than it is once it's tied. So I'm just going to tie a bow here. It's really easy to tie bows with twine like this. I, I struggle with fatter ribbons, but the, the twine I really like. And then I'm just going to stick down my wood panel right on top of the ribbon and now I don't have to use any kind of glue dot to hold that bow in place because it is sandwiched between the card and the foam adhesive. And now I can just trim off the ends of that twine to the right length. And that is how you do the card. It's really fun, cool technique, and I really love the wood look. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.